In today's video, we're going to be looking at creating the index, new, and create views for the books, as well as fleshing out the home page of our site. We're going to be looking at doing multi-part form uploads with files, as well as some more complex searching that we didn't get into with the authors page. So let's get started now. To get started, let's first look at what we're going to create so that we have an idea of what we need to do inside of our routes and models. We're going to be creating the search books page, which is going to have a title published after and published before field that we can search by, as well as it'll list all the books down here that match that search. Also, we're going to have an add book page, which will allow us to add a title to a book, an author, which we select from a list of authors that we've already created. We can select a publish date here. We can select page count, we'll just say 200 for example. We select which book cover that we want to use, and we can add a description to our book and then we can hit create. And that'll bring us back to this book page where as you can see, we can see the title of our book here and we can search. So if we titled our book title, for example, in this case, we can search and we can see that book. But if we search for something that's not the title, you'll see it does not show up. And this is what we're going to work on creating. These pages are very similar to the pages that we created for our authors in the last video. So inside of our roots folder here, let's take our author's file, let's copy it and change it to be called books instead of called authors, so we can call this books.js, and inside of here we're going to define all of our routes for our books. So the first thing we can do is we can select our book model instead of our author's model, which we have not created yet, but that's okay. This is going to be our all books route, and we'll just delete everything inside of these routes for now because we don't really want to worry about what's inside the routes, we just want to worry about the actual routes themselves. So we have our create book route and our new book route. And there we go. And these methods inside of here for these different functions, they're going to be very similar to what we created for the author, but since the book is more complex, they are going to be quite a bit more complex. The next thing that we want to do is set up our model for our books, which again, we can copy our author model here, change the name to be book.js, and then instead of calling it an author schema, we'll call it a book schema, give it a title here of book, and change this variable to book schema. And our book is going to have a bunch of different properties inside of it, while the author only had name, the book is going to have a title. We're also going to have a description, which is going to be very similar to the title. And the description is not going to be required, so we can remove this required field here. Change this to be description. This will just allow us to add a book that has no description. We're also going to want a publish date for our books. And this publish date is going to be of the date field, so we can just set that the type here is equal to date. And we want this to be required. So we're gonna set required true. We're going to have a page count. This is going to be an integer. So we'll say type is number since in MongoDB it uses the same types as JSON, which is going to be number for any number. And we also are going to require this. So we'll say required true. Then we're going to need another date. This date is going to be the created at date. And the reason we're having a created at date is because inside of our application, our main page is going to show all of our recently added books in order from when the most recent one to the least recent one. So we need a date at which these books were added to the application so we know which books were created when. This is going to be, of course, of the type date, and we want to require this, obviously. And also, we want to set this to a default value, and we always just want to set this to the current date. So we can just say date.now, and this will set the create at date to the current date every time that we create an object, so we don't have to manually set this every time we create a book. Next, each book is going to have a cover image, and instead of actually passing in the image itself into the database, we're just going to pass the name of the image so that we can just store a single small string, and then we can store the actual image itself on our server in the file system, since you always want to store files in the file system when you can. We're going to put this as a type of string, and we're also going to do require true for this. Then lastly, as we all know, every book has an author, so we need to set an author type for our object. And this is going to be a little bit different because we want to actually reference the author from our author's collection that we created over here. So instead of putting the type here to be some kind of author type or ID type, we're going to be using the mongoose.schema.types.objectID. And this essentially is just referencing another object. This is just the ID of the author object. And this is telling mongoose that this references another object inside of our collections. So we also want to put this to be required true, since every book must have an author. And then lastly, since we're referencing something else, 
we need to tell Mongoose what we're referencing. So we can say we're referencing the author collection, which we created earlier. And this author name must match the name that we set here for our model. Now that's all we need to do for our model for now. So inside of our server, let's actually use the book routes that we created. So we can copy this author variable, change this to book, change this to books. So now we are, have all of our book routes in here. And down here, we can tell our route that we want all of our slash books routes to go to our book router that we created. Whoops, if I can spell that. There we go. And as you can see in our application over here, when we're at books, it's just slash books, add book is going to be slash books slash new, and so on, just like it was for the authors, it'll be slash authors and slash authors new. Let's go back to our route here for our books, and we just want to send some information to the page so that we know we're rendering these pages. So we'll say res.send all books, copy this down, we'll say new book, and right here we'll also do create book. That way we actually can see these routes when we go to them. And then let's start up our server, npm run dev start, which we created earlier. That'll start up our server locally. We see that everything works successfully. So if we open up our localhost port 3000, refresh this, zoom it in so it's easy to see. And we go to our slash books page. You'll see that we get all books. And we can go to our slash books slash new, and we get new book. So we know that these routes are working perfectly, and they're hooked up as we want them to be. Now we can actually work on implementing them in the same way that we implemented our author routes. The first thing we want to do for that is actually add links to our headers because right now we need to type in the URL manually. So if we go into our partial here for our header, we can just copy these two author links and change these to be book links. So we'll change authors to books here. And we'll also change this to say books. And we'll say this to say add author or add book. I'm sorry. We'll save that refresh. And now we have links to our books page. And we also have a link to our add book page. Now the first thing that we want to do is actually set up our new books page so we can add books, which we can view later. Let's look at this add view book page. Zoom this out so it's easier to see. And you can see that we need fields for the title, author, publish date, page count, cover, and description. So let's get started with that. First, we need to create a new folder here for our books views, because this is going to be the same as our route name up here to be easier. And we can just copy the new view here that we're using for our author pasting into books because this is going to be very similar. We'll say we want to create a new book. The action is going to go to the books URL instead of the author's URL. And instead of when we cancel, we want to go back to the books instead of back to the authors. And we'll still render a form fields partial in here, just like we did for authors. So let's copy that partial into our books page here. And now we need to just change this to be all of the book fields that we want. So if we look over here, we see our first field is going to be title type of text. We're going to give it a name here of title so that we can reference this on the server. And this will be our book dot title, which we're going to be using as the value. And let's just copy this, paste it down and do the same exact thing here for author. But author is going to be quite a bit different because this isn't actually a text field. This is a select box. As you can see, we can select the different values for our author from a list. So we need to actually create a select input here and populate it with all the authors. To do that, we need to loop through all the different authors in our page and one way that we could do that very easily is just by accessing that author's collection. And we could say dot find, pass it in that we want to find everything. And then we could say dot each, for example. But this is really not the best way to do this because this is asynchronous. We don't want to render all of this code inside of our view files. We want this to be inside of our actual server. So we're going to remove this and actually pass a variable into our view here, which is going to be called authors, which is all the authors that we want to loop over. And inside of our actual server, we're going to pass that authors variable down into our view. Next, we can actually create each one of our options. So to do that, we create an option here, we want to select the label, this label is going to be equal to here, the value of our author dot name. So we can say author dot name is going to be the label that the user will see. And then we want to set the value here to be the actual ID of the author. So we'll set that to author dot ID. And there we go, that is our option variable created. But if a user has already selected an author, we want to set that option as selected. So we're going to create an if statement here. This if statement is going to say that if the author dot ID is equal to the book dot author. And remember, the reason we're doing book dot author here instead of book dot author dot ID is because this author field is actually the ID. If you remember, inside of our model, this is an ID object. So our author is actually the ID of the author inside of our book. So we can check to make sure that the ID of the author 
is equal to the author's book ID. And if so, this is going to be our selected value. So this option here, we'll just set it to be selected. You just put the selected attribute on your option. And now this is a selected option. But if, for example, this author ID is not that, so we'll put an else statement here, then we want to do our option, but without the selected attribute, so that this will be deselected for our option by default. And then lastly, we want to put in our brackets here so that we know that this is right there. This is going to be opening up our else statement. And finally, we need to close out our brackets for our else statement, just like that. And this is the hardest part about writing your code in the server like this, is you need to make sure that you have all of your opening and closing brackets properly lined up inside of these tags here with the percent symbol so that the server knows where to open and start these if statements and these loops. And that's all the code that we need to do in order to render this author's loop right here. Let's remove this extra input here, save this, and actually view what we have. So we can go to our add book page, and you'll see that we're actually not rendering anything on here. And that's because inside of our server for our books, if we go to this, we're just doing res.send all books. So instead of doing that, we actually want to render our new page that we just created here. So instead of here, we want this to be an asynchronous function. As I mentioned in the last video, we're going to be using asynchronous functions since it makes working with Mongoose much easier. So the first thing inside of this synchronous statement that we want to do is we want to create a try and catch block so that we can catch any errors from our asynchronous code. And since we're passing the authors into that page, we want to first get all the authors. So we'll say that our authors are going to be equal to the author model dot find. And we just want to find everything. We'll just pass an empty object. And we want to await this so that our code will wait here until it gets all the different authors. We also need to make sure that here we input our author model so that we can actually use our author model in order to get all the authors. So we'll paste that in there just like that. And then we want to actually create a new book. So we'll just say our book is equal to new book. And this is just like we did with the authors. We create this new book so that when the user modifies it and we send back data saying that they incorrectly entered their data, we can populate the field so that they already created. And that's all we need to do here. We'll catch any errors. And if we do get an error, we're just going to redirect the user to the books page. So we'll just say here slash books, and this is going to send them back to the books in case there's an error getting any of this data. But if there's not an error getting any of this data, then we'll just want to say res.render and we want to render that books page that we just created. So we'll say books slash new, make sure we put our slash at the beginning here. And we want to pass some variables into that. So we're going to pass the authors variable that we created as well as the book variable, just like that. And now we have all the authors being sent to this new page as well as the book information. Now, if we save that and refresh our page here, you'll see that we get an error. And that's because I accidentally put this slash at the very beginning here. So we can just remove that, resave our page and refresh. And you'll see that we get our title being created here as well as a list of authors inside of our application. And since none of our authors are currently selected, it'll just select the very first one in the list by default. So now let's go back to our form fields here, open up what we should be having inside of our page. And you'll see that the next thing we need to do is the publish date. So this is going to be very similar to how we did our title. We'll just paste this down here. We're going to want this to be the publish date. We're going to want to give this input a type of date. Since this is going to be a date field, we want to set the title here to be publish date. And the value here will be publish date. One thing that we will notice though, is that this value here for this publish date inside of our JSON object of book is not in the correct format to be used inside of this input date object. So we actually need to convert this to the correct notation. So in order to do that, we're going to do a little bit of tricky JavaScript here. So I'm going to put this on a new line so that it's easier to see what we're doing. And we're going to first say that if the published book is equal to null, because we first want to check to see if the object is null before we actually try accessing it. And if it is null, we're going to be using this ternary operator. So this is pretty much like an if statement. So we'll say if it is null, then do what's after the question mark, which is just going to be return an empty string as the value. But if it's not null, so that's what this colon is, this is essentially the else section. So if this is false, it does everything after the colon. And what we want to do here is we want to say book dot publish date. And then we want to convert this to the correct format. So we'll say to iso string. And we just want to split this on the t variable here because this converts it to a string that has time inside of it. And we don't want the time section. So this string will be date, then t. So it'll have date here. So it'll be like 2019 09 for or 19. And then it'll have t 
for example, and then it'll have like 12, 23, for example, for time. So we only want this date section of it. So we split it on that T and we just get the first section of that string, which will get us this date section since we only want a date and not a time. So now that we have that all done, this will actually populate our publish date field for us. And as we can see, if we refresh over here, we have our publish date field showing up right here and is defaulted to nothing for now because there's actually no value for publish date because it is null. To make this form a little bit easier to work with, as you can see, everything's on one line right now, let's just wrap all of our different inputs in divs to break these up onto different lines. So we'll create a div here to wrap this section. We'll also do the same thing for our author indent all this and this is just going to make it a little bit easier for us to visualize this form inside of its non-created css state that we have here right now and there we go now if we save that refresh our page you'll see that all of our inputs are on a different line which makes it much easier to follow what's going on now let's move on to our next input which over here we can see is our page count we'll copy over publish date and we'll change this to be here, instead of publish date, it'll be page count. We want this to be a number field instead of a date field. Change the name to be page count. And we don't have to do any fancy transitions for the value. So we'll just set the value to be equal to book.pagecount and we'll remove all this other fancy stuff that we did for the date fields. We're also just going to put a quick minimum value on here, which is going to be equal to one because we can never have a book that's less than one pages long. Now we can move on to our last two sections, the first of which is going to be our cover. So we can change page count here to be cover. And instead of putting our name here to be cover image name, because this is what the variable is on our model, this isn't actually going to be the name of the image. This is going to be the file itself. So we're just going to set this to cover so that we know that this is the actual cover file image as opposed to just the name. We also want to change the type here to be file instead of number, remove the minimum, and also, unfortunately, file inputs don't allow you to set a default value, so we have to remove the value field as well, and this will just always be a blank file input that we can always add to. Now, lastly, we want to add in the description, so change this to description, and description is a bit different because this is a large text area, as you can see, which supports us being able to use the enter key as well as other keys inside of here that you can't use inside of a normal text input, so we need to use what's called a text area. So we'll set this to be a text area as opposed to a input of type text. And the text area also needs a closing tag of text area because this is where all the text for your text area is going to go. We also want to set the name here. So the name for this is just going to be description. And then instead of having a value property on text area, we actually need to put the value inside of the text area here. So what we'll do is we'll just have this value inside of here. We'll say book.description is the value for our text field. And there we go. That's going to have all of the information inside of here that we want. Now, if we go over to our page, refresh this and zoom it in a little bit so it's easy to see, you'll see we have our title, author, published date, page count, which is a number field that can't be dropped below one. I'm hitting the down key and it won't let me go below one. We have our file input where we can choose our input for our file, as well as the description field, which we can input anything for our description that we want. Now that we have our entire form completely built, Let's work on actually hooking up our backend so that we can use that form in order to create our books. So inside of our routes file here, we can go down to our create book route. And in here is where we need to set up all of the logic for creating our book, which is going to work somewhat similarly to how we did this for authors. Again, this is going to be asynchronous as is mentioned in the function definition here, because we're going to be using mongoose and awaiting instead of using callbacks. And the first thing we want to do is actually construct our book object in order to do that. We'll create a new book variable. We're going to set it equal to a new book, but instead of defaulting it to nothing, we want to actually set all of our different properties for our book. The first one is going to be our title, which is going to come from the request.body.title. Then we're going to do the exact same thing for the author. The author of our book is going to be our request.body.author. Publish date is going to be, again, exactly the same here, except for we need to wrap this inside of new date because this request.body.publish date is actually going to return to us a string. So we need to convert that string into a date using the new date function here, which will give us an actual date we can store on our database. Then we can do the page count. So set page count equal to request.body.page count. And lastly, the description of our book here, which is request.body. 
description. There we go. And you'll notice that we're not actually putting the cover image name inside of this book object yet. And that's because we first need to create the cover image file on our file system, get the name from that, and then save that into our book object. The easiest way for us to do that is to use a library called Malter. So let's install that library. We'll just do npm i Malter. And Malter allows us to work with multi-part forms, which is what a file form is. Also, in order to use files, we need to change our form inside of our new page here to be of the type of multi-part form. In order to do that, we need to set the enc type to be equal to multi-part form data. So slash form data. And this tells our server that our form is going to be sending multi-part data, which could include a file. Let's save that and go back to our server here. And inside of here, we need to use that Malter library in order to create the actual book file. To do so, let's go to the very top of our page here and import that Malter file. So we're going to say a variable called upload is going to be equal to the setup for Malter. So before we can do that, we need to require Malter. So const Malter equals require Malter. And then we can use this Malter variable in order to call the function on it, which is going to help us to configure Malter in order to be used with our project. The first thing we need to do is tell us where the upload is going to be. So we want the destination to be some form of upload path inside of our project. And of course, we're going to want to put this inside of our public folder inside of another folder called book cover names or something like that. But we don't want to hard code this inside of our folder here for our server. We want this to come from our actual book model. So let's open up our book model and create a variable here inside of it that we can use to set up this. We can just call this to be a constant variable called cover image base path. And this is just going to be the path to where all of our cover images are going to be stored. And we want to store that inside of our uploads slash book covers folder, which is going to be inside of our public folder here. Now that we have that, we also want to export that variable down here. So in order to do that, we need to use our module.exports. And we don't want to export this as a default. We want to export this as a named variable, which would be called the cover image base path. And we'll set that to our cover image base path. Now we can actually import this inside of our books route. In order to do that, all we need to do is first take that variable we created in our book model and use that to create the path that we need. But before we can do that, we need to import a library, which is called path built into Node.js. And we can just do this by saying require and putting in path here as the name of the library that we're going to require. Then we can create our upload path variable. This upload path variable, we can just call upload path. And we can use this upload path by setting it equal to path.join, which is going to combine together two different paths. Our first path is going to be our public folder. And then after that, we're going to use that book variable. So we can say book cover image base path. Now this upload path that we see here is going to go from our public folder into that cover image base path we created. And we can use that right down here to say that this is going to be upload path for our destination. The last thing that we need to do is actually filter our files. So we're going to use file filter, which allows us to actually filter which files our server accepts. This is going to take a few variables. It's going to take the request of our file. It's going to take the actual file object as well as a callback, which we need to call whenever we're done here with our actual file filter. So let's create that arrow function. And instead of our file filter here, we just want to call that callback function. The first parameter we want to send it is just going to be null since we have no error because this is an error parameter. And the second option is going to be a Boolean that says true if the file is accepted or false if the file is not accepted. And all we want to do is accept image files. So we want to set up a variable here. We're going to call this a image mime types variable. And this is just going to be an array that has all of the different image types that we accept. And these are default variables that you can find just by Googling image mime types. These are going to be available and they're always exactly the same from the server. So in our case, we're going to support JPEGs, which is images slash JPEG. We're going to support PNG, which is going to be the same thing, images slash PNG. And lastly, we're going to support GIFs, which is images. Or Now that we have all that set up, we can actually work on setting up our route to accept files. So the first thing we need to do is add in another parameter here. We're going to take that upload variable Tell it we have a single file being uploaded in this form, and it has the file name of cover. This variable name cover here is whatever you set the name of your input to be. So we set our cover input here to have a name of cover. So now it's telling our Malter that we're uploading a single file with the name of cover. And it's going to do all the work behind the scenes for us 
to create that file, upload it onto our server, and put it in the correct folder. This library is also going to add a variable to our request here, which is going to be called file. So request.file is going to equal the file that we're uploading to our server. So we can check that if that file is not equal to null, then we actually want to get the file name from it. And we're again using this ternary operator. So we'll say if the file name is not equal to null, then we want to get the file name from it. So we'll say file.file name. But if it is equal to null, we'll just return null here. And we want to create a variable called file name, which we set equal to that. So essentially, we're just getting the file name from the file if it exists. And then we can use this file name here to actually set our cover image name. So our cover image name is just going to be in the name of that file, file name. And now if we uploaded a file, this is going to be equal to the name of that file. But if we did not upload a file, it'll just be equal to null. So we can send an error saying they didn't upload a file. Now with all of that set up, we actually have our entire book object correctly created and we can work on saving that. So we'll wrap this in a try catch again because we're going to be using asynchronous code in order to execute this. And the first thing that we want to do is just trying to save the book. So we'll create a new book variable. We're going to set this equal to book.save. If the book does save correctly, we just want to redirect to that books page, just like we did in the author's file. If I open that up here, our author route, what we want to do if we created an author was we wanted to redirect that author to the new author's page. But since we don't actually have those new book pages created yet, just like we didn't with the new author, we're going to say that instead of redirecting to the new book.id, we're just going to comment that out for now and redirect them just to the straight books page because that's going to be easier for us since we already have that page implemented. In the next couple of videos, we'll be implementing these pages and switching this over to redirect to the correct page. If for some reason though, there's an error on the page, we want to render the new page and pass it this book variable. But this new page, as you can see, does quite a bit of logic inside of it to render it. So let's create a function that allows us to encapsulate this logic so we only have to write it in one place. So we'll remove this from here and we'll come down to the bottom of our page here and we'll create a new function and we're just going to call it render new page. And inside of this function, we're going to do all of this code here. The first thing that we want to do is we actually need to pass in the response variable so we can render or redirect as needed. We need to pass in the book variable because we sometimes are going to render a new book, sometimes we're going to render an existing book. And that's all we need to pass into there. And lastly, we just want to pass in an error message here because sometimes we're going to have an error message from our server. So we'll just say actually has error. We're going to default this to false because most of our requests will hopefully not have an error, but if it does, we'll set this to true. Now, inside of our code here, we can see that we can select the authors as we need to. And if getting those authors fails, we'll redirect back to the book page. But if it doesn't, we'll render the authors, we'll render the book. And if we have an error, we also want to render an error message. In order to dynamically create this error message, we're going to create a new variable here called params. We're going to set that param variable to equal the parameters we're sending to the server. And we'll just pass that in here to send this down to our view. And then we want to add dynamically to this params variable if we have an error. So we can say if has error, then we want to execute some code. And in that case, we just want to say params.error message is going to equal error creating book. And there we go. That's all that we need to do for our error message handling. And now we just need to call this method where it's being used. We also need to make sure that this is an async function because we are using async await inside of it. So now let's copy that render new page up here into our new book route. We're going to pass it the response. We're going to pass it a new book and we don't have to worry about passing anything for has error because we're never going to have an error on this new page. Then we can do the same exact thing down here instead of our catch. We just want to render that new page again. So we're going to pass it the response. We're going to pass it our existing book object and this does have an error. So we want to just pass true here for our has error object. Now we can set up our server again by running npm run dev start. And we can actually test to see if this code is working for us as we expect it to. As you can see, we already have an uploads book covers folder that was created by our multer library, which is great for us. Now we don't have to worry about automatically creating this ourselves. And we can work on testing this new page. Let's refresh it to make sure everything works. We'll just pass in a title here of title. We'll use an author of Kyle. Publish date is just going to be here. Page count will be 100. We'll put a cover of just some default cover. And we'll finally put a description here of a description. And we'll create this. And you'll notice that it created it, added it, redirected us to this all books page. 
you see here that we have a book cover that was dynamically created with a unique name so we never have to worry about our names being overlapping and it added that book to our book database which is why we got redirected here to this book page instead of being shown an error. Let's for example say that we forgot to put a title we should get redirected back here with an error. So we click create and you see it says error creating book. You may also know that when we created this with an error it actually added that book cover to our book covers over here which we don't want. We don't want to save a book cover for a book that's not actually in our database. So if we do have an error saving the book we want to make sure that we remove the book cover that was saved if there was one that was saved. In order to do this, we need to install a new library. This library is going to be called FS, which stands for file system. This is again built into Node. So we can just say require FS, and now we have access to that file system library, and we can use that to delete the book covers that we don't actually need anymore. So if we have an error, before we render the new page, we wanna just call another function that we'll create, and we'll call this remove book cover. So remove book cover, and we're going to pass it the name of that cover image. So in our case, this is going to be book dot cover image name. And we only want to call this if we actually have a cover image name. So in our case, we're going to say if book dot cover image name is not equal to null, then we're going to call this code for removing the book cover. Because if we don't actually have a name, then there is no book cover for us to remove. Now let's create that function, which we called remove book cover function remove book cover and it's going to take file name and instead of here we want to actually just unlink that file so we can say fs.unlink this will remove the file that we don't want anymore on our server and we want to pass it the path of where that file is at so we can say path.join this path variable is something we imported earlier we want to join to the upload path which will give us public uploads book covers and we want to combine that file name onto the end of that upload path. So this is going to get rid of any file that has the file name inside of this book covers folder here. And this is going to take here a function which will have an error parameter. And if we get an error, all we want to do is log that error. So we'll say if error console.error error. And essentially all this is doing is it's just going to log the error that we get out to our console here so that we can see it because we don't want to ruin the user's experience by redirecting them or throwing an error to them because it doesn't actually matter to the user if this file gets deleted or not. This is only for our own good and not for the user, so we don't actually worry about sending this error to the user. Now with that out of the way, let's cry again saving this. We'll upload a file here and we're going to check to see if our book covers increases in by one or not. So if we click create, you'll see that we don't actually get a new book cover being added here to this book covers, which is perfect. It gets added and then immediately removed when we fail to save the book. So we don't have to worry about accidentally uploading and saving files that aren't actually linked to any of the books in our database. Now that we have the create and new pages already done, as well as file uploading handling, let's work on creating our books page where we can view all of our different books. To make this easier on ourselves, we can just copy the index page from our author section, paste it into our books, and change this to be just like we want for books. So we want to search our books, not our authors. We want to get the books route, and here we can set the different labels we want to search for. First thing we want to search for is going to be the title of our book. It's going to be text with the name of title. And we want to pull this from our search options dot title object. Also, we want to wrap this inside of a div just so that we have these on different lines. So it's easier to use our input form. And there we go. We have that on a different line. And we can just copy this down here in order to do our published after. So we'll say published after field. We want this to be a date with the name of published after and we want our value to come from that published after variable and if you remember right in our form fields here we had to do a bunch of fancy logic to convert things to an iso string because from our database this published date came out a little bit differently formatted than we actually want it but since we're posting and getting the exact same data from our server we're sending this published after and reading this exact same published after without hitting the database first we can just use this published after variable in here and it'll work just fine. We can do the same exact thing here for published before. So we'll change these variables to published before, published before, and finally published before, oops, published before. And there we go, that is the basics of our form setup. And then down here, we actually wanna loop over our books instead of our authors. We'll do this inside of a div again. So we'll say div here, 
and indent that so it looks good. Whoops. Copy that div down so that we have access to it. Close it off. And in here we'll say each book. And instead of just rendering out the book's name, we actually want to show the image of the book because that looks a little bit better in my opinion. So we'll cancel this out. We'll make this an image. We'll give it a height here of 150. A width is going to be equal to 100. And we're going to set the source here. And we want to get the path to this image. But right now we don't have an easy way to get this path from the book. We have the name, which is cover image name. But we want something like cover image path, which is going to give us a direct path to where that cover image is uploaded. So let's actually work on creating a variable that does exactly that for us. If we go inside of our books model, and we can actually create a virtual property. So what we want to do is we want to take that book schema, and we want to say dot virtual. And this will allow us to create a virtual property. It'll essentially act the same as any of these variables that we have here on our book, but it will actually derive its value from these variables. And we want to call this cover image path. And then we just want to define a dot get function for it. So we can say when we call book dot cover image path, it's going to call this get function here. And we'll just pass this in a function. And inside of this function, we're actually going to define how we get that. And the reason we're using a normal function here instead of an arrow function is because we need to have access to the this property, which is going to be linked to the actual book itself. So make sure you use a function here and not an arrow function. And the first thing we want to do, we want to check if this book actually has a cover image applied to it. So we can say cover image name is not equal to null. So if there is a cover image, then we actually want to return the path, which leads to this book public uploads book covers folder section inside of our file structure. To do that, we're going to use that path library that we used earlier. So let's just import that. We'll say const path is equal to require path. And now that we have that required and added in, we can come down here and we can say that we want to return path.join. We want to join our root of our object, which is going to be inside that public folder. And we want to append here that cover image base path variable that we created up here. As you can see, this uploads book covers. So it's going to be inside our public uploads book covers folder. And then lastly, we want to append the actual file name to the end of this root. So we can see that we have our root folder, which is public. We have the path to the book covers folder inside of that public folder. And then finally, the name of the actual file, which corresponds with the book cover for this book. So now that we've created that property, inside of our index page here for books, we can just access it just like this as if it was any other property on our book. And that's all we need to do to really get started working on this page right here, but we need to actually implement this page on our server. So let's go back to our book server here and let's go all the way up to our all books route. And here we actually want to render that page. So we'll say res.render and we wanna render that books slash index page right here and we need to pass it a few things. First we need to pass it our books which is just going to be a list of books we're going to create and then we need to actually pass it the search parameters. So we'll say search params and this is just going to be equal to our request dot query parameters just like that and now we can actually access this book variable and actually create it. So again we're going to wrap this in a try catch because this is going to be using asynchronous code Inside of our catch, we can just redirect the user back to the home page in case for some reason we get an error. And if we're able to successfully execute this, we want to render our books index page. So inside of this try, let's first try to get all the books. And we're just going to, for now, get every book without actually searching on it. So we'll say book.find, pass it in everything right here. And if that actually executes successfully, we'll get our books here and our search parameters are going to be returned. So let's save that refresh our server over here and you notice we immediately get an error and it's because search options is not defined this should just be search options instead of search params and now if we save that refresh our page you'll notice we get another error and it's saying that books dot for each is not defined so in order to debug this we just look back at where our books variable is defined and you'll notice i forgot to include the await keyword here which is incredibly important to put this await keyword because it's how we actually get the result of this executed function now, if we save this one last time, refresh our page, you'll see that everything loads up just fine, and you'll see that our first book is being rendered, which is exactly what we want. But you'll notice if we filter by something and hit search, it'll just stay there because we're not actually doing any filtering on our book.find. 
you'll also notice that our search parameters are staying in here, which is what we want, which is nice. Now, in order to do this query, it's going to be a little bit more complex since we first need to check if the name is similar to this name. We also need to check if the date is after this or if the published date is before this. So we need to do a little bit more than just a simple matching query. So to get started, let's first create our query object. We'll say const query is going to be equal to book.find. And if we just pass this book.find with nothing and don't actually do anything, don't actually execute any methods, this returns to us a query object which we can build a query from and then execute later. And we want to build this query from our request query parameters. So just like we did in the authors page, we're going to check to see if our request dot query contains the parameters we want. So first we'll check for the title. If the title is not equal to null, and if the request query dot title is not equal to an empty string, then we know that they actually passed a title to this page and we can actually check and render this title inside of our query. So we can say that we want our query to be equal to our query. Essentially, this is just appending onto our query dot rejects. And we use this regular expression in our earlier example with the authors. So this is going to be very similar. We wanna check on the title of our book. This is our database model parameter. So this is gonna be the book dot title object of our database. And then we wanna create a new regular expression and this regular expression is just going to contain our title. So request.query.title. And we again pass the I flag, which just says that we don't care if they typed in a capital S or a lowercase s, it's going to be treated exactly the same. Now we need to again do this query for published after and published before, but let's first just look at this query for our title. So here, instead of awaiting book.find, we just want to await query.execute. And this is just going to execute our query that we defined up here and we appended to down here. Now, if we save that and we actually click our search, you'll see again, we get another error. And this is because I'm using const here and I'm reassigning the variable. So we needed to make sure that we use let here instead of const. Now, if we save that and click search, you'll see that it works and that our book doesn't show up because the title does not match this title. If you remember earlier, we titled this book title. So if we search for something like this and click search, you'll see that the book shows up with the correct title. Let's try adding another book to our page we're going to call this one book for the title, and we're going to put a publish date here. We're going to do this on March 1st, 2019, and we want a page count, which doesn't really matter. File, we'll just make it this bluish file, and description, again, doesn't matter. Now we have both of these books here, so if we search for a title of book, we see that we get this book being returned. If we search for a title, we get the other book being returned, and if we wanted to search for published before, we remember that that one book was published on the 1st of March. So we would want to do a search such as 2nd of March. And if we click search, that book should show up. But right now we're not actually filtering because if, for example, we selected something before, you'll see that this book is still showing up. And that's because we haven't added our filters over here for published before and published after. So let's do that now. First thing that we need to do is copy this down and paste it here. And we'll just want to change a few things. We want to check first for published before. We want to do this again to make sure the published before is not equal to an empty string. So this means that we have a published before variable. And instead of doing a rejects here, we're going to do a less than. So we'll say that our query is going to be equal to query dot less than or equal to. This is the syntax here for that. We have LT for less than and then E for equal to. We pass it in the field in our database we want to check. We want to check the published date in our database and we want to pass it in the request query dot published before. So essentially what we're saying is if the published date is less than or equal to the published before date, then we want to return that object. We can do the exact same thing here for our published after. So let's copy this, change this to be published after. So if we have a published after variable, then we want to do greater than or equal to. Again, we want to check the published date and here we want to use published after. Now with all that set up, we can just do our search again and you'll see that nothing actually shows up because none of our books are published before this date. If we, for example, select March 2nd, and we know that our book was published on March 1st, and we do our search, you'll see that this book shows up, which is perfect. We can also do the same exact thing for published after. We know our book was published after the 27th of February, and if we search, you see it shows up, but it was not published before or after the 2nd of March. So if we click search, you see that book no longer shows up, so now we know that our published before and published after filters are working as we would expect.
the last thing that we have left to do is to actually implement our homepage because on the homepage, as you remember, we want to put all of our recently added books into it. So let's go to our homepage and actually render out our code for rendering the homepage. Here we go. We first want to add a header to our page, which is just going to say recently added. There we go. And then after that header, we just want to render our books exactly the same as we do on this page. So we're just going to copy the code here so we don't have to paste it out twice and write it out twice. And instead of here, there we go. Now we're rendering all of our different books as images as we want to. But inside of our index page route, so if we go to this, we need to pass the books here first. So we'll pass it an object with a books variable. And then inside of this books variable, we want to actually order our books by recently added, so by our created add date before we pass it in here. So the first thing we want to do is, as always, set up a try catch since we're going to be querying database. We need to make this an async function, or no, async function, there we go, so we can use a wait. And we also need to reference our book model, so we'll say book is going to be equal to require. And we need to get to our models folder, so we'll say dot dot slash models slash books. There we go, slash book, and this is going to be our book model. And we also want to create a variable, which is going to be our books. So we'll just create a books variable here. And for now, we're just going to default this to nothing. And next, we actually need to set this book variable. So we'll say books is going to be equal to book.find, since we want to find all of our books. And we want to sort these books by created as. So in here, we can say created at as the key. And we want to sort these in descending order, since we want the newest ones first. And then after we're done sorting them, we actually want to limit them since we only want to get the top 10 books. So the 10 most recent books are going to show up on our list here. And then in order to execute this code, we're just going to run the exec function just like that. And this is going to find all of the books in our database, sort them by created at, and then it's going to give us the first 10 of them. We need to make sure that we await this here. And if we somehow get an error in doing this, we just want to initialize our books to an empty array just like that. And now it'll actually render our books. And if we save that, and refresh our page, you'll see that we get our books sorted in the order that we created them. Now that we have all of this code written and working, let's actually commit it to GitHub. So the first thing that we want to do is modify our git ignore because we don't actually want these folders inside of here, our uploads, book covers, we don't want to upload these to GitHub. So inside of our git ignore, what we want to say is inside of our public folder, we want to ignore everything inside of the uploads folder. And there we go, if we save that, you'll see that Visual Studio Code will gray this out so that we know that this is not actually included inside of our GitHub deploy. Now we can commit our changes. Do git add to add all of our changes. Git commit. With a commit message, it just says books create index new so that we know which routes that we created. And let's lastly push this to our GitHub. And we also want to push this to Heroku. So we could say git push Heroku master. And there we go, our deploy just finished and you can see that our application is open over here. We can view our books, which we have none of, and we can also add a book. So let's add one, the name title, author is just going to be test, get a default publish date, page count of 100, description here, and we'll just do a default file right here, and we'll click create. And there we go, we have our file being created right there. If however though, our servers restart, so if we come here, we run the restart all dinos, which happens anytime that we deploy, update an environment variable, and even happens daily on Heroku, You'll notice that if we come back here and refresh our page, that our image is no longer there. And that's because Heroku does not actually persist your files on its server. Every time that you restart your server, all of the files on it are going to be deleted. So we need to come up with a better plan for storing our files. The best solution would be to upload these files to a separate server, such as Amazon S3 or any other file storage system. But almost all of these are going to cost money to implement and use. So what we're going to do is actually store our files in the database. This is definitely not ideal, but it's the easiest solution for us and it's going to be completely free for us to play around with. We won't be tackling that in this video though, that is going to be in our next video where we'll actually look at storing our files on the database instead of in our file system of our server, that way we can use Heroku to store all of our information. So when that video comes out, make sure to check it out over here and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any of the other videos in this series. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a good day.